question in today's video is going to be Chewbacca. Now, Chewbacca is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. I mean, I have a lot of favorite characters in Star Wars whenever you think about the Grand Sopa things. But he's a pretty cool character, and I think everybody can agree that we like him a lot. So, what does Chewbacca look like in the Star Wars Unlimited trading card game? He's a vigilance leader with the heroism aspect as well. He's Underworld and Wookiee, so it was obviously him before he joined the Rebel Alliance. And then he has an action. You can exhaust him to play a unit that costs three or less from your hand. You have to pay the call. It's not for free. And again, Sentinel for this phase. And then you control seven or more resources. You can deploy him as a leader unit. And when you do so, he becomes a 2-9 Sentinel with Grit. So obviously, your idea, your game plan here is to play a pretty defensive Sentinel deck. And then sort of when you switch into the leader unit, when you put your big body on the field here that your opponent just has to sort of attack into, then you could build up those damage counters and hopefully swing big and sort of deal some big damage um, throughout the game. That being said, there's a couple things you need to know when you're playing Chewbacca. First off is that the Saboteur keyword is going to absolutely wreck a lot of your game plan. Because with, when your opponent has Saboteur on on board, a lot of times your, your ability on the leader side is going to be absolutely useless. And then when you flip into the leader unit, you're only basically going to have Grit because Saboteur allows you to ignore Sentinel. But there's a lot of ways to A, get around that, B, and a lot of ways to still use Sentinel, even while your opponent has some Saboteur characters on the field. Because although some characters may ignore Sentinel, not every one of their characters will be able to do the same. Obviously has a great ability here by giving his character Sentinel, but you have to always be aware of the fact that Saboteur ruins your game plan, or rather it puts a, uh, uh, it's a, the silver bullet to your game plan here. You're not going to actually be um, completely useless throughout the game, but Saboteur is going to allow you, your opponent to ignore your Sentinel and sort of go around your game plan in your main objective here. But that being said, there's a lot of cool cards you can still play with Chewbacca if you do decide to play him. And then of course you even have to go over the fact that seven, um, controlling seven or more resources is more than I believe any other character in the game, or rather very close to, it's one of the higher numbers should I say. And so, um, uh, it's also a pretty steep cost, quote unquote, although you don't have to pay them to get him into play as a leader unit. Well, that being said, let's take a look at some of the cool Vigilance cards that works well with Chewbacca here. And let's get rid of the leader text. Okay, so, um, obviously I think the security complex is an absolutely amazing option here to use with Chewbacca. 25 health and the ability to uh, give a shale token to a non-leader unit. It's going to allow you to keep your Sentinel that you just played alive for that much longer and keep him that much more annoying. Although again, Saboteur will just pierce right through that and, you know, have fun whatever way they feel like it. Yoda is actually a pretty interesting card in Chewbacca, incidentally. Three costs to four. He has restored two, but when he's defeated, you can choose any number of players and they each draw a card. So if you use Chewbacca's ability with him, he'll be a four HP character on the field. That also, when he's dead, because he'll have Sentinel, so your opponent will try to attack him, will have to attack him most cases, he's going to actually get you a little bit of a benefit there. So he's actually a pretty interesting unit in this deck. Then you also have the Wilderness Fighter, 3 cost to 4, so a big HP body, but also it has Shielded, so when it comes into play, it gets a Shield token. If you play with Chewbacca's ability, obviously it's one of the best cards to play with Chewbacca, because he's going to come in here with a Shield token and with Sentinel, and he's going to be a defensive body on the field that your opponent's going to have to deal with. And then you can also play the Distant Patroller, a little bit of a weaker character, 2 cost to 1, but it's going to have a nice when defeated ability, you can give a Shield token to another Vigilance unit. If you play this card with the Sentinel ability, and then you can give a Shield token to another unit you want to keep alive, or another unit with the Sentinel ability, then you could have this guy dead, um, and then he can sort of pass on that Shield token, and he'll die pretty, not pretty easily, he'll die literally to anybody with any amount of power. So then you can also, for some events, play Vigilance for cost. Obviously, you have to have the double. You have to double up on the vigilant symbol. Choose two in any order. Discard six cards from an opponent's deck. Hail five damage from a base. Defeat a unit with three or less remaining HP, or give a shell token to a unit. Usually, you're gonna definitely want to be looking at that third, that fourth option there when you're playing as Chewbacca to give a shield token to a unit. But those other options can help you depending on what situation you're in in the game. Then moment of peace is gonna be pretty cool. One calls to give a shield token to a unit for the same reason that we keep mentioning. Repairs can be pretty cool. If you have a Sentinel unit on the field with a big, a large amount of HP, getting that damage off of them so they can keep on Sentineling for future rounds or rather for the rest of the phase is going to be really important or can come in handy. Then you can also play Entrenched. It's going to be a two cost upgrade. It's going to give your, um, your, your, your attached unit plus three plus three. Although your unit can't attack bases, it's huge stat buffs is going to essentially mean that it's going to stay a lot around for a lot longer and when your opponent is forced to attack into it it's going to deal a lot more damage back to your opponent in retaliation 
And then that's going to be really it for the Vigilance cards we want to highlight in today's video. But that's not the end of the cards we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the as the aspect cunning. On the cunning symbol, you can play Jetta City, an absolutely amazing base for Chewbacca in particular. 25 HP. And then also has an empty action to give a non-leader unit minus 4 power and minus 0 HP. This is going to be really important throughout the game because when your opponent's trying to attack into your Sentinels, then basically having no attack is actually going to mean that they're going to do minimum to no damage with that attack. Especially if you give it to a Saboteur or something like that. And then they just can't deal damage. Beautiful. And then also it can be used as a more of aggressive piece too by making your opponent docile. So you can swing in with some of your units and take a minimum to no damage in return. So those are the bases you can take a look at there. There's some pretty good unit options too. The Crafty Smuggler is going to be a 2 cost 2-2 two -two with Shielded. You can take a look at the Suit Racer. Although it is a vanilla unit, it's going to have 3, 4 power and 3 um, HP. 3 cost, 4 power, 3 HP. You can take a look at the Millennium Falcon. It's going to be a 3 cost, 3, 4. The unit interplays ready, and then also you can you ready cards during the re when you ready cards during the regroup phase. You either pay one resource or return the unit to um, um to her owner's hand. It's going to be um obviously that's a negative ability on the bottom there for most in most cases, but the potential ability to keep returning this back to your hand and then replaying it with Chewbacca's ability to keep playing it turn after turn to keep getting that Sentinel ability on the Millennium Falcon to be able to swing in the turn you play it can actually end up being a positive thing in some cases. You can play the Asteroid Sanctuary as an event to cost exhausted enemy unit, and then also you can give a shield token to a friendly unit that costs three or less. A lot of the cards you'll be playing is going to cost three or less, or, or rather, a lot of your cards that with Sentinel are going to cost three or less because that's how you play them through um, Chewbacca's ability. So then, obviously, this card is going to give a shield token to most of your Sentinel characters or the characters that have Sentinel. And then finally, you can take a look at Disarm. For the same reason as Jedi City, it's going to be a one cost to give an enemy unit minus four power and minus, four H one is minus zero HP this phase. And then it's going to basically a new to your opponent, and so you can swing in and deal some big damage. Or alternatively, um, it can become a, uh, a um, defensive option, and then your opponent's going to have to swing into you with essentially nothing. Or you can, you can um, minus your opponent's biggest threat, or the threat you're most afraid of, usually going to be their saboteur units. And then they're just going to not be able to deal any amount of damage with them, even if they can ignore Sentinel or and Shields. And that's going to be it for the cunning aspect, but we have some more cards to look at from the command aspect. So looking at the bases here... Um, the energy conversion lab is a fine option, perfectly fine, but I also really like the echo base here just for that extra HP. And then you can take a look at cards like the Battlefield Marine, 2 cost, 3-3. Three, three. It's just going to be a decent statted card that you can give Sentinel to. You can also take a look at cards like Maul and Mothma. Now, this is another thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're talking about Chewbacca's ability. Giving Sentinel to a card that it's really not a threat makes your opponent basically have to attack this not a threat card. And though they're going to get minimum return from doing this, but you're going to get maximum return from them wasting their attackers, right? So she's a two-cost unit, one, three. When you play her, you can search the top five cards of your deck for Rebel card. Now, you can play highly into Rebels, of course, and if you're playing this card, you will be. But the point is that after you play this card, she's what she's not really that great. Though she does have a decently high HP, um, rather, she has a higher HP than her power. Generally, she's going to be doing little chip damage throughout the game. She's not really going to be a threat to your opponent. Usually, they're, you're, they're, you're going to have bigger threats on the board that they may have to worry about. But the ability to say, well, guess what? Even though this is not really a big threat to you right now, you have to swing into this thing, of course, of course unless, of course, you have Saboteur, can actually benefit you throughout the game. And then you can look at those cards like Agent Callus, 5 cost, 4-4, four, four, Ambush, and then when another unique unit is defeated, you can draw a card, giving you um, your Sentinel, your unique unit Sentinel will force him to be defeated and get you that extra card draw. Of course, you can only use that ability once each round. You can play the Patrol V-Wing. It's going to allow you, it's a 2 cost, 1-1, one, one, and when you play, you get to draw a card. It's the same thing as Mon Mothma. You play it with the um, uh, Chewbacca, you draw that card draw, and you basically see this little weenie 1-1, one, one, your opponent has to attack into it, and they really have no other options. Unless, of course, they have Saboteur, but you get the point. And then it's just basically say this thing that's completely not a threat. You have to waste, essentially, a whole attack on it. Tactical Advantage is going to be a one cost. Give a unit plus two plus two. A lot of times, you're going to give your, this to your Sentinel unit. It's going to make it a bigger, beefier threat. Now, your opponent's going to be forced to attack into a unit. That's going to be a lot more powerful than otherwise. And then Academy Training, same idea. Tactical Advantage, two cost plus two plus two. Except it's going to survive a little bit longer. So, the extra cost is pretty warranted there. And then finally, for the aggression aspect, we have a pretty couple pretty cool cards because um, they're going to allow you to sort of target out your opponent's um, units and say, well, guess what? This unit has Sautar. I'm going to kill it before you get a chance to use it. So Target Town is a great example of that. Deal 3 damage to a non-damaged leader unit. 
A lot of times your Saboteur units can be actually pretty weak on the defense. So be able to, a lot of times you can just use this ability to just knock one off the field. Or if they're already damaged and they do have a little bit more HP, you can use it to knock them off the field. Wolf is a cool card. Two cost, three, two, Saboteur. When you play him and when you attack with him, bases can't be healed for the phase. Then you can also play a card like an Ardent Sympathizer, three cost, three, three. But if you have initiative, it's going to get plus two power. And so obviously it would Sentinel or when you have the initials and you have five power unit that you play onto the field with 3 HP with Sentinel, they're going to have to swing into it and take 5 damage in return, even though you really didn't put much resources or thought into the card. Disabling Fang Fight is going to be really important. 3 costs, 3, 2. When played, you may defeat and upgrade. And obviously this card is going to really want you, you're really going to want to use this card to defeat your opponent's um, Infiltrator skills to make sure they lose that Saboteur on any of the units they may have tried to give it give to give it to. The Star Wing Scout is an interesting card, 3 costs for 1, but when it's defeated, if you have the initiative, you get to draw 2 cards. This is really important because it only has 1 HP and 4 power, so if you play this card down, and you have the initiative, and you give it Sentinel, and your opponent is forced to attack into this card and take 4 damage in return for minimum 1 damage to you, and then you get to draw 2 cards off that exchange, I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty, good, um, it's a pretty good transaction in my opinion. Open fire is going to be the last card we're talking about from the aggression symbol. It's just going to say deal 4 damage to a unit for 3 costs. It's going to allow you to knock off those pesky sentinel units that your opponent's going to have on the field. Now, we don't really have any um, heroism cards to talk about, but there's one card I want to talk about, which is going to be Confiscate. It's going to allow you to 1 cost defeat and upgrade. Uh, that infiltrator skill that I mentioned earlier, that card's going to attach to some units, going to give them saboteur, and the ability to attach it to bigger units and units that you really don't have a clear, easy answer to. A lot of the base units that have saboteur, they're a little bit weaker, a little bit, not much, but a little bit, and then, I mean, not always, but I, but sometimes those weaker units going to have saboteur, or those saboteur units are going to be a little weaker. And so the ability with infiltrator skill to give a bigger unit saboteur and say, well, guess what? I'm going to give this unit saboteur, I'm going to ignore your shield, you ignore your sentinel, and it's going to be a really big unit that you have no answer for. Sometimes um, it can be really important for your opponent to knock down your deck while saying confiscate, get rid of that. You don't have saboteur in that big unit anymore. You don't have saboteur maybe on any of your units at that point. And though you can go, go past and say, well, attack into my sentinel unit now. You have no other choice. That's going to be it for the cards we're going to look at today. Quicker video, hopefully. Um, but um, a lot of planning and, and a lot of strategy goes into playing Chewbacca. Obviously, you can just go, well, I'm just going to play the biggest HP things, give them Sentinel, and say, well, hopefully that will just turtle out my opponent until I can win the game when flipping into Chew Chewbacca's leader form, gritting them out. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different ways you can play this leader with a lot of different aspects, but hopefully this gave you a little bit of an insight of what this leader is capable of and what you can do with this leader if you ever get to play with it. That being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please go watch some of our other Star Wars Unlimited leader spotlights. And if you guys are interested in more leader spotlight content, we have a couple more to go. Stick around for that, and I hope to see you guys there. Well, that's going to be all for now, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys go ahead and watch some of our other videos that we've made on this channel. Also, give this video a like if you thoroughly enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future content. And I hope to see you guys back at the roost.